Good evening, kiddies. I just had quite a scare. I actually thought my heart was beating again. <laughs> Tonight's twisted tale is a villainous voyage, a murderous medical madness that screams out the consequences of getting too nosy with your neighbors. So the next time you stare into someone's window, remember, curiosity killed the cat. There we were, two perfect strangers, completely and totally unknown to each other, who happened to be standing in the same exact street corner at the same exact moment in time. I mean, if I'd stopped to look in a store window, if, if Paul's elevator had been one minute faster or slower, we never would have met. It's a miracle. It is. I, I think so. Don't you? was definitely lucky. The luckiest moment of my life. This is our cue to say good night. Good night and a happy anniversary. Good night. Ugh, oh, I can't wait to get out of this costume. Good night. Good night. Oh, I... Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Totally wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got you something. Uh. I hid it so you wouldn't find it. What do you mean you're not interested in having this conversation? Who are you? I don't care. Don't walk away from me like that. I don't care if you have a headache. Take a fucking aspirin for Christ. This isn't important to me. Happy anniversary, sweetheart. <laughs> Susie, what's the matter? What's the matter? What's going on? Baby, what happened? Talk to me, sweetheart. Oh. It's all right. It's all right. Just take a deep breath. Oh. Oh, oh okay. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. I'll get a doctor. I'll get a doctor and be back.
Susie. I brought the doctor. Sit down, Mrs. Hastings. Sit down on the couch where I can get a better look at you. Honey, you know Dr. Trask. He lives across the courtyard from us. Tell me again what happened. I was gone five minutes at the most. When I came back, she was just standing out there. She couldn't talk. She could hardly move. It was like, I don't know, somebody put a spell on her. She hasn't spoken a word since. And uh, where did you say she was standing exactly when you found her in this state? Out there, looking out on the balcony. What is it, Doctor? Mr. Hastings, I'm going to need your help. Oh. Hold your wife, Mr. Hastings. I need to give her something. Susie, it's me, Paul. What is that? What are you giving her? Just a mild sedative. Darling, it'll be all right. Whatever it is, it'll be all right. We should run some tests as quickly as possible. We can take her to Long Hill. It's all right, Susie. You're in the hospital. We put you in the jacket so you couldn't hurt yourself. They just want to keep you overnight for observation. Mr. Hastings, please sign here. She's still having some difficulty speaking. Is it shock or some kind of stroke? Your wife has suffered a harrowing ordeal. She's tired. She's fragile. Give her time. But what happened? What should I do? You should go home and try to get some sleep. I just can't leave her Mr. here. Mr. Hastings, I assure you, she's safe here with me. In the morning, I'll run some tests, and then we'll have a clearer idea of what is disturbing her. Call me tomorrow. Please go now. Let her rest until tomorrow. This is Trask in room 19. Mr. Hastings is leaving now. Please show him out. I gotta go now, Susie. Dr. Trask is here to take care of you. And I'll be back in the morning. Gently, gently, please, Mr. Hastings, I'll take care of this. You can go be right here with the desk. Heart condition. Too much excitement, too much noise, too much talking. Aggravates it terribly. I could attempt to explain myself. But if you don't mind, I think I'll just skip the self justification. You are, of course, in a sanatorium. The last grievous stop of the irretrievably insane. A small, private sanatorium of which I am both director and chairman of the board. 
And according to my diagnosis, you are also a dangerous psychotic who needs to be saved from herself. Yes, I know it does seem unfair, but that is what you get when you intrude so rudely into a neighbor's life. You may unclench your nervous knees. I have no interest in defiling you. I try to keep that sort of thing to a minimum here at Long Hill. Desk. This is Trask in 19. Mrs. Hastings is ready for her medication now. Good night, Susan. Something remarkable has happened to your wife. Something profound and traumatic. And since she is either unable or unwilling to tell us herself, we have no choice but to wait. Wait? Wait for what? Until she snaps out of it. It could be tomorrow. Or it could take years. We are a good, hungry girl, yes? Not like the other ones. A little more. That's good. Carrots are good for the nerves. They make good, strong brain cells. What's he doing to make her better? To get her out of that god-awful jacket? I came out of the bathroom. Oh, Susie was Paul. out on the terrace. Paul. I went out... Polly, in 13 years of working at a medical research laboratory, oh, I have up. never heard of anyone who went from sane to insane in the space of five minutes. That just does not happen. Dolores, you should see her. She can't talk. She doesn't know where she is or who I am. She came at me with a golf club. Well, what do you know about this doctor anyway? Oh, Jesus, Taurus. Hey, a word to the wise from your big sister. Check him out. That's all I'm saying. If it were me, I'd leave no stone unturned. I'd make damn sure Susie was in the right hands. I'm sorry, Mr. Hastings, but I'm beginning to worry. There's been no change at all. Perhaps there's something you haven't told me. Like what? The two of you were celebrating your wedding anniversary that evening. Sometimes the first few years of married life, the noise, the constant yammering. What are you suggesting? That we weren't happy? We were happy. We had our problems, but everybody has problems. Of course. Of course you were happy. Susie was always normal. As normal as you or me. The psyche is like a kaleidoscope. One shift, the slightest turn, can affect everything. What was once quiet and familiar can become terrible and terrifying. I believe that this is what has happened to your wife. I don't believe it. Yes, Doctor. Mr. Hastings will be leaving now. I'll be back. A husband could become extremely disadvantageous to the patient. Arrested development, paranoid fantasies, psychosexual malfunctions. He could disrupt treatment. From now on, I will be monitoring his visits personally. I understand, Doctor. It's all right, Susie. Everything's gonna be all right. I'll find out what happened. And you'll come back. 
You'll come home to me. Oh, please, please. That will be all. Mr. Hastings, what can I do for you? I want to see Susie. Of course. No! No, TV! I want to see Susie. In person. Keep going back to that night, rewinding the tape over and over. I'm in the bathroom looking for the bracelet. You're alone. When I come out, you're frozen. But something about it is all wrong. But what? Something happened when I was in the bathroom. It had to have something in the living room. A phone call? Someone called and I didn't hear it. Outside, you saw something outside. You saw something outside. You saw something and that's why you can't talk. You saw something, what was it? Something terrible. Was it anyone I know? The doctor. Dresk. You saw Dresk. Congratulations, Mr. Hastings. You'd be very good at charades if you weren't about to die. I've sent Mr. Hastings home. You may bolt the gates. <laughs> See, I have to do this in self-defense. Oh, love. Once again, it complicates everything. All fed and bathed now. Time for a little pill and a nice long nap. Good afternoon, Doctor. Desk. Frankly, I'm too fragile for all this excitement. My heart is too weak for so much violence. Consequently, I've arranged to operate on you. Shall we say, a lobotomy? Of course, you and I both know that you won't survive the surgery. This little situation of ours must be resolved. Absolutely. It's so lovely in here with you, Susan. So quiet.
Good morning, Susan. I thought I'd come retrieve you myself. I'm going to release you from your straitjacket now. Desk. <coughs> oh, please, my pills. I'll die without, without them. I can't breathe. Please, please, you can't just stand there and so watch me. I want to watch you. You deserve to die. <laughs> Murderer. Like you. for poor Dr. Trask. There's a villain with a heart. A cat, that is. <laughs> Just when he thought he was going to silence Susan forever, she walked all over him. I suppose you're wondering what became of Susan. If you give me a scream, I might just tell you. <laughs> 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 